Hi, I'm Keith. I'm Lauren. We're technicians at Flute Authority. We do realize that we can get a little nerdy sometimes, and our tech lingo can get rather confusing. Yeah. So we thought we'd take a moment and explain some of the terminology that we use to help you better understand. Here we go. All right, so let's just start at the top with the head joint. So some of the terms that we use, stopper assembly, a lot of people don't realize there's a little contraption in here that keeps the flute plugged up. And we often tell you to change your cork once a year because that can affect how the head joint responds. It shrinks, it swells, it's affected by the weather. So change the cork once a year. Definitely. One of the other problems we run into with head joints, how they fit, is when the head joint's out of round. And that means the head joint has taken a smack right here and created an oval shape or even a ding that doesn't allow the head joint to go into the body properly. All easily fixed, but now you know what those terms are. Another common term that we use that you may not understand is when we talk about our tenons, which can be found on the head joint itself, which is the very end that goes into the flute body, or on the very end of the body is this right here is a tenon. The tenons are what connect all three parts together. So the head joint tenon goes into what we call the barrel, which is connected to the body. And then this body tenon is what goes into the foot joint. It's important to have the tenons properly fit. That way none of your joints fall off. That is one thing that we do not want to happen. Um, when joints become loose, they can be properly fit. That way everything is nice and secure. Also, if they are too big going on to either part, we can also take care of that as well. And just a short public service announcement, don't ever use grease or, or anything on the tenons because that does attract dirt. And the more dirt that is attracted, the tighter the fit it is. And you can end up gouging and scratching the tenon, making it uh, even, even harder to get together and take apart. Oh, totally. The only time cork grease is allowed is on our piccolos. This is the tenon on a piccolo and this is cork, hence the name cork grease to be used on it. We know it's popular for those of us, myself included, who were uh, in elementary school band, um, that sometimes the teachers will tell the kids to put cork grease on, the, on their flute tenons. And that's something that they, they grow to continue to do into adult groups and, and, and rehearsals. So please don't put cork grease or, or anything on the tenons. Uh, they're a tension or a, a friction fit tenon. Mm -hmm. And that just means that they hold themselves together by, by means of friction. So don't put anything on them. So Lauren, what are you doing? I am unhooking the springs on this flute. That way we can talk about rods and hinge tubing. Wonderful. Now I'm going to stall while she takes it apart. <laughs> We're going to show you close-ups of this throughout the video so that you get a better view. Um, but right now Lauren is, is, is pulling out the, um, the rod and she's going to give you a, a better idea of what the hinge tube and the rod and pivot screws actually are. So on our left hand on our flute, the um, upper C key, which you all like to refer to as left hand first finger, um, what is how that key is held on is with what we call a hinge rod. So what that means is that the rod goes completely through the key, unlike a pivot screw, which only screws in to one part of the key for that. So, ta-da. <laughs> <clears throat> Great. That was lovely. Do you have anything else you'd like to say about <laughs> hinge rods and hinge tubes, Keith? Um, yeah, don't bend them. So if your flute has taken a hit or been bumped even slightly, these long hinge tubes, especially on the trill keys, can get bent. And when that hinge tube bends, it comes and puts pressure against the rod inside and can do what we call bind the keys. Mm -hmm. Binding the keys, you'll feel it, it's sluggish, it, it grabs, and the key doesn't want to spring back to where it should be. And it's more than just uh, the, the annual need for your COA where it's just maybe a little dirty. It, it's really, you can feel the difference when the key is binding. Yeah, and sometimes if it's extreme, when we take the hinge rod out of the key, we can't get it back in. 
but luckily enough, we can fix that for you. So definitely make sure if you're experiencing those problems to send it in, and especially for your annual clean oil and adjust. There are also some other bits that hold your flute together. <laughs> um, this particular bit you might be very familiar with, it's called a pin. The pin is what holds the hinge tube and the rod together. You know it better as the thing that snagged your favorite sweater or your favorite <laughs> pair of pants. And on occasion, if they're a little sharp, they've, they've scratched you or even maybe drawn a little blood. Ouch. <laughs> the pin, uh, it, it literally is a small, tiny little pin that goes through the hinge tube, through the hinge rod. There's a hole that's drilled through and it connects the keys uh, over longer distances so that keys will move together and allow others to move freely. Yeah, greatest uh, example of that is the Chilkey um, assembly. Sorry. Um, that's probably the most common where we snag our shirts and clothing and things like that. But that pin is in, it holds the whole assembly together. If you notice, this one key um, moves freely while well, I can't get it off because it's holding the pins in. But we have tooling to get those pins out so we can clean out the mechanism. Um, put new oil in and make sure everything's just moving freely and fantastic for you. And straighten those bent rods. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so some other bits that you may have wondered about are the things that hold the pads in. How do they stay in? Well, depending on the, the type of pad and the instrument, <clears throat> the, excuse me, the smaller trill keys are, uh, and piccolo keys, uh, those pads are held in by glue or shellac, depending on the brand. Uh, but the larger pads that are on your flute are held in by a grommet or retaining ring for the open hole and a washer and screw for the closed hole. Yeah, so with those open hole keys, they have that retaining ring or grommet. Um, we want that nice and tight. We friction fit that in to make sure that your pad stays in. Nothing's more terrifying than seeing your pad fall out, quite honestly. Um, so we make sure that's nice and secure, that there's no leakage around the retaining ring. And it goes the same with the um, pad screw and pad washer. We want to make sure those are nice and tight onto your pad and make sure there's no leaking around those um, bits as well. Yeah. And underneath the, the pad washer and screw, there's a little piece that is, is soldered to the key cup itself called a spud. And it has internal threading so that the screw uh, the, that holds the washer on will hold the pad in and, and connect it to the cup. Under the pads, there are other little bits. Oh, yeah. uh, these are called shims. They're either made of paper or mylar, which is another type of plastic, uh, depending on the type of padding that you have. Uh, and we, you, they look like paper or plastic donuts. They can raise the pad up or they, we, we cut them into little pie pieces and we'll shim, use them to shim the pad to, to get rid of leaks. Yeah, so they come in in all different diameters. They're kind of like confetti. Sometimes people too much put too many shims <laughs> in. It is kind of like confetti when we take it out. But yeah, they can be cut into, like Keith said, um, different like pie pieces if you think it like that and that's what takes care of your leak and everything too And if you ever want to see a technician cry Right after we dump a drawer full of these on the floor. We need a moment We're on our bench as example <laughs> a right here. It's always so fun to clean up and reorganize Thanks so much for watching and tuning in with us today. We hope that you learned some of the tech lingo that we use, and maybe you can use it um, yourself with your own technician as well. It's very helpful when you can talk the talk a little bit and, and it helps us to know more what's going on on your end, especially if you can identify it. We don't expect that, but if you can talk the talk, it does help. Um, but at any point you have any questions or, or something doesn't make sense or you need an explanation, don't hesitate to ask, we're more than happy. On more than one occasion, I've sent uh, photos to student customers of mine so that they could see their flute in pieces because they were curious. I think it's fun and it encourages them to learn more. So anytime you have a question, just feel free to ask. Definitely, and if you have had any of the problems or concerns of what we discuss in this video, please reach out and you can um, schedule something with us online. We are technicians. We know people who can fix your problems. Like us. <laughs> and we are more than happy to help. Also, just check out our YouTube page. There's a ton of info on there of different things you can learn too. If you want to schedule an appointment, just please visit our website at fluteauthority.com and 
Thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Bye. Bye.